I came to Oxford and I did two years of philosophy and pol philosophy, politics and economics here. So I did a second BA degree because I didn't have enough background in philosophy to do an, a, a graduate degree in philosophy. And I was finding a lot of it kind of boring and uh, arid. Uh, but then I found some work in practical ethics that excited me. Jonathan Glover's book, Causing Death and Saving Lives, and Peter Singer's book, Animal Liberation. And when I started seeing Derek's manuscripts, yeah, it was like a revelation. I mean, it was so exciting, so exhilarating to, 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 to see these arguments. They were just so brilliant. I mean, they just were arguments unlike any arguments I had ever seen before. And the conclusions were so startling and surprising, and yet the arguments were so rigorous. It, it, yeah, it was, it was just the most exciting, exhilarating thing imaginable. Um, <laughs> there's another philosopher who I think will have a moral philosopher, moral and political philosopher, who will have a lasting uh, effect on moral philosophy, and that's John Rawls at Harvard. And it, I suppose the, the really great thing that Rawls did was to work for many years on a book that he published called A Theory of Justice that was a big book that made it finally respectable again to do moral and political philosophy in a way that was divorced from the obsessive study of language and moral language in particular. In other words, he, he enabled philosophy to return to the, the direct study of substantive issues in moral and political philosophy, which people had been unable to do for decades because of the uh, overwhelming influence of both uh, linguistic philosophy and positivist philosophy, which said um, uh, you know, the moral language was basically meaningless. And so there's a long, arid period in moral and political philosophy in the 20th century, and Rawls made it possible to do real moral philosophy again. And Derek came along at precisely the time at which this was beginning to happen in the late 60s and early 70s. Somehow or other, I mean, it was really just the fact that Derek was a more imaginative and deeper thinker than, than anybody else, really. And when he began to become engaged with these issues, his ways of thinking were so original, so penetrating, uh, that those of us who were around at the time just found it dazzling. It wasn't. It wasn't all entirely original with him. They were in, in the literature on personal identity. Locke had had some sketchy thought of experiments about people sort of swapping bodies. David Wiggins and Sidney Shoemaker had begun to think about uh, issues in the uh, philosophy of personal identity involving brain transplants. But Derek took those really interesting science fiction type uh, examples and developed them in ways that supported arguments with incredibly novel and interesting conclusions. And uh, so it was the mode of argumentation appealing to really interesting, clever examples. To the best of my knowledge, he, he didn't read science fiction or go to science fiction movies, I think. I mean, he must have known about Star Trek or something like that. But I think the examples came out of his own creative philosophical speculations. He was thinking about personal identity. He was taking seriously you know, Locke's thought experiments about um, the soul going from one body to the other. And he just developed m more scientifically realistic examples of that kind of thing. Students now can't really have any sense of how revolutionary and exciting Derek's work was because work that they are reading now has been shaped and informed by the work that Derek did in the 1970s um, in, in, in so many ways. Moral philosophy has changed a lot under 
Derek's influence. And so a lot of people are are doing things now in a way that is modeled on what Derek was doing in the 70s and what eventually became reasons and persons, but they're not aware of that. It's just because that's the way moral philosophy is done now. It wasn't done that way before Derek came along. 